No Desmond Ritter and no Jerome Ford, but they're still pretty good offensively. What do you see from Cincinnati? Yeah, very, very same offense as, as last year. Um, you know, and I don't think we realized at the time how, we knew Desmond Ritter and Jerome Ford and I think Alec Pierce are really good players, and I think they do a pretty good job on Sundays too. But you know, and, and the supporting cast they had around them is now the main guys, and they're doing a really good job. And, uh, you know, still a very similar offense that you saw a year ago. Um, you know, Brian's doing a really good job operating the offense. Got a live arm. I mean, he threw for over 3,000 yards uh, last year uh, where he was at. And, and the tailbacks have all played. They're experienced guys. They're not rookies. Uh, the tight ends, you know, I thought a year ago they were probably as good as anybody in the country. And the same guys, uh, Josh Wiley and those guys there. And, and then wide out, they got real speed out there. Um, number one, Trey Tucker. I think we saw that two years ago when we were up there. Uh, 21, I think he caught the first ball in his last year. Uh, across the middle there, and he's a really good player. I think he was uh, honorable mention for player of the week in the conference last week. And they're both 10, 400 meter guys, so you got to know where they're at, know what they're capable of, and, and then into the boundary, uh, whether it's 84 or 20, both of them are, are playmakers over there. And O lines is the same guys as up front last year. So we got to make sure we, we just take care of us and, and really focus on what we, what we do and how we do things, how we approach the game. Uh, I think first and foremost, we want to go stop the run. I think we did that early in the ball game last year. I think late in the game, the fourth quarter, uh, particularly the last drive, a few runs got away from us. But um, we got to stop the run early. That way, you know, they, they were probably 50-50, maybe more 60-40 pass run. Um, but we want to try to make them one-dimensional as much as possible and see if we can affect the game in that, that manner. When they when they're a team like that who has a wide receiver who does you know a lot of the scoring just is a really good wide receiver. What's the balance of trying to take him away but also not get beat by some other guys? When yeah, yeah. Well, the, the fact they're a balanced football team is, is hard to kind of put all your attention to him. You know, um, uh, sometimes when you got a, a team that's going to throw the football and, and not really try to run it, then you can maybe double that guy up a little bit more. But and the fact they got several guys, not just the wideouts that, that are really good speed guys and got really good hands out wide and had a big week last week. Um, but the tight end Josh Wiley, I think, is you know a special player too. I think he's maybe the all-time leading or, or as many touchdowns for a tight end in a long time up there. So uh, he's got some pretty big numbers. And the tailbacks, I mean, they had a, a 76-yard run against SMU, broke that game open. The uh, USF game, the, the run that put that away was about 40 yards out, so they can park it from everywhere. So you got to make sure that you're balanced, and that's what they do. That's what good football teams do. They don't have one or two weapons; they got several. Um, and, and at the same time, in the pass game, you better know who can take the top off, off of it, and those guys can. So we got to make sure that all our attention is in the right places, all our eyes in the right places, and then we, we uh, get 11 hats the ball and do a great job tackling. This is a team that, to be the top dog in the conference, you have to be, and I'm sure that that's something that your defense is kind of savoring coming off of this bye week, right? Yeah, ever, ever since I've been here, ever since I got here, it was, uh, Cincinnati was a standard. Um, we got here in 2020, and, and they were a standard then. And until somebody knocks them off at home, especially, uh, they'll still be the standard in this conference. Um, and I know they're not, you know, Tulane's officially in first place right now in the conference, but uh, until they, until Tulane beats Cincinnati, Cincinnati's the standard. And that, that's kind of what we're looking at, and that's the approach we take. Um, and we, we're excited about the challenge and uh, very respectful of, of their football team, their football program, and what they've done up there, because it's, it's been an amazing run of what they've really done uh, ever since Coach Fickle's done, been there. And uh, the, the home winning streak, all those things are, are you know, a credit to, to, to them as coaches, as the program, as their players. Uh, but we got to go focus on us and, and make sure we're ready to freaking go up there and, and bring our game and, and play our best football game of the year. What do you remember about being up there your first year? You well, it was, it was uh, during COVID, so it was, you know, we had a night game up there last time, I believe. Uh, and it was just cold and dark and not many people in the stadium. And uh, we didn't play very well. And, it's a night you want to forget, to be honest. Um, you know, so you, you try to forget some of those things, but you don't because you know exactly their performance last time, you know, how they performed last time. And you always keep those things as a chip on your shoulder and, and kind of keeps you motivated. And uh, and our, our players, you know, there's certain teams they pick out that, hey, these are the guys that they always talk about. And certain guys that they kind of, hey, Cincinnati, you know, summertime, last spring, they talk about Cincinnati. They talk about the Cincinnati game. They talk about, hey, well, you know, how we're going to play against Cincinnati this year and do those things. So, those are challenges that you know, and, and every game's important. Every game's a big game because it's next game of the year. But there's some on your on your schedule that are special to our players, and, and this is one of them. Just because the challenge, 
discussed, we talked about where these guys have been and the standards they've set, and that's what we want to be. And we know that, hey, uh, to, win, to win and be where we want to be and, and possibly compete for a championship, you got to go through Cincinnati. So that that's uh, the focus of us. Not that it guarantees you guys anything, but how nice was it to be able to sit back and watch them Saturday and maybe have some extra prep time instead of vice versa? Yeah, I think for a lot of reasons uh, you enjoy a bye week. I mean, just uh, nine straight weeks, you know, one for our players, just kind of catch their breath um, and bump some bruises, heal up a little bit. And, uh, you know, just it also just gives you a chance to kind of sit back and re-energize. You know, you came in Sunday and it was like, man, I feel fresh. I just feel like, hey, we got, you know, you had a day off on Saturday, just kind of catching around, laying around, watch football. But it felt like you had a week off in some, in some ways, just come back in and you're ready to go back to work and go back at it. And, um, you know, our, our guys have been great all week, just kind of excited to be back out there and just the effort and enthusiasm they've had, not only in practice, but meetings and just the approach they've had this week has been really special. Going off of that, the senior leadership, they've got to be excited going into the fourth quarter of the season, already bowl eligible. How have they voiced and tried to motivate the team to finish the bowls out? Yeah, I mean, I think that's that's the, the goal of every game, every season. It's not just a, you want to start great, you want to play uh, great in the middle eight, you call it, the middle second, third quarter, but go finish the game. And I think we've done that throughout the season is, you know, we've been in some close ball games in the fourth quarter and been able to finish them and, and get the win. And we got to do the same thing with our season. And it's one game at a time, one day at a time. And just, you know, hey, every day matters, every rep matters. Be intentional about that rep, be intentional about that meeting and take that approach to it. And if you'll take that championship mindset, you know, to meetings, to practice, to film study at night, um, to the classroom, to your daily life, next thing you know, you're living a championship lifestyle and then you can make those things happen on game day.